All right. This is going to be weird. Let's do this so that... <coughs> All right, so I'm going to start. I took this color. This is a uh, golden burnt sienna and transparent red oxide. And I just put a little bit in there, put a bunch of water, and that's what I got this. Uh, it's very washed out, and I just wiped it over it to give it some kind of tone a base um, and there is a little piece right there that I am worried about anyways all right so I'm gonna use this as the color and I don't know how um, I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna start with a little bit darker where all the shadows are. Um, God, I haven't done this in months, so bear with me. <laughs> I'll probably start with one of these bigger brushes um, just to get the uh, uh, stuff like this, like the shadows and the cheekbones and the neck, um, all these bigger. And it won't be much darker than this, so let's try to make this. I probably could get away with just using this. So I'm going to just see what this is going to look like. Um, and I have something prepped here that uh, it's the same. This is a piece of masonite, but with gesso on it, and exactly what this is. So I'm just going to paint this. Yeah, you see how light that is? I don't know if you can even see that. A lot of shadows here. Sorry about that. But yeah, this is very, very light. You can see it there, but when it dries, and I'll get the... Uh, dryer out so what I'll do dry this and then go back over it with a little bit darker and see if I can darken it um, I'll most likely put some of this purple in it uh, golden transparent um, I don't want to put black in it because that'll make it too I would just say too rough, too aggressive, I guess you could say. Purple is such a good color to mix in brown. Um, it's a good color to make shadows with. A lot of people think black. Um, or you can use a transparent smoke for shadows. But um, To mix in with a color like this, um, you don't want it to be too harsh. So I would just, I'm just going to add a little bit of this. Let me shake this up. Just to give this a little bit of a different color. Make it a little darker. Because like I said, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to put down solid lines. As you can see, this is very very light. Like you can't see that there's I'm gonna turn this light off. Uh, yeah, now you can see that there. That's good. All right. So now I put a little bit of that purple in here. And let's just see. Let's say if I'm going to do like this part here, her cheek shadow. See, it got a little bit darker. What I normally do with that is I'll take a wet rag, kind of dampen it, maybe not, let's see what a, you know what, that really didn't do anything to it, did it? 
All right, so let's do this. Let's get a little bit. We're going to do this. We're going to put a little bit in here. And then we're going to add this actual color here. This uh, transparent red oxide. And we want, we need a little bit of a, a little darker. Now that's a lot better there. See if you don't want that little part, you're trying to blend something in. You just hit it with the rag. Come back, give you a little bit darker. And that'll give you a, a nice, it's a nice line, but it's, it's not enough to, you know, like if you were gonna make a line, it's gonna be so stark. I guess you could call that stark. I do like this. I gotta remember how to do this. I haven't done this in a minute. See, it just it'll blend in, and it'll you'll make it to where it's almost like a good, you know, gradation. For some reason, I want to call it a graduation. See, I'm just gradually bringing that in. And like if you were to do the inside of the eye here. I'm just going to block that in. And it's going to go, it looks dark here, but there's so much water in it that it's going to go lighter, right? So you, you tap it with the, with the brush, with the rag, and you got this nice little shadow there. Remember, this is all watered down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to just to put a little bit more color, probably a little bit more purple just to darken it um, to the to the point where I, I'm not going to do detail with it because I'll probably do the deeper shadows with the airbrush. Um, and then what I'll probably do is use some burnt sienna with this purple. This is a little bit more opaque. Um, I would love some... What is that? Raw burnt sienna? Is that darker? I think that's a real dark. Yeah, or b raw umber. Maybe I'll use some of this here in a little bit. You see, this is just a good... Like, if you watch... Um, what is his name? I want to say Sergio. He... Like, they, they block it in. Like... They literally will block in what they see. Basically, you're painting what you see, like the shadows. I don't know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. Give you kind of a map of where all your shadows are. Ooh, I like that map. <clears throat> all right, so I think I like this. I think I like this starting color. And see, it's not a lot. You don't need a lot. Because, like I said, I'm just going to be doing uh, just these dark parts. Use a big brush and, you know, where you need it. Right now, I'm going to uh, mask this off. I'm going to mask this background off. Um and paint it pink. And then I'm gonna mask this off and paint it uh, Tiffany blue. Because his daughter wants her eating a Tiffany blue iced 
donut. So yeah. So let's do that. All right, what I'm gonna use is this. This is contact paper I get from Home Depot. It's clear, clear matte. I've never used like shiny or anything. I don't know if that's any different. It might be, th excuse me, thinner. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back this up so you guys can see a little bit more. I'm going to cover up my laptop when I paint this. All right, I'm not going to sit here and try to cover this whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of guesstimate right where her, her one ear starts and the other ear ends. Good. She's just about that right. So let's do that. So this will be perfect. I'm going to bring it down all the way. Take my trusty Zacto blade. I've been using this stuff for years. Um, I'm not a fan of frisket, it's too thin. This is just thick enough to where um, if you get a little bit more paint than you want, it's, I mean, it'll, it'll seep under because this, like I said, this is just shelf paper, so it's not like super, super sticky, but it's pretty sticky. I'm going to show you this. There's a little secret that I just do. Hold on here. So normally if you take you try to take this off, this part's gonna come down and stick to itself. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it to my arm. Make sure it's stuck to your arm. Pull it. Make sure you're not pulling too fast because it'll curl up and stick to itself, which you do not want. And if it does it during this video, then you'll see why. All right. So then what you want to do, take it from this side. Go directly to your piece. And if you don't put it, if you, if you don't stick it all the way down, it won't stick to your... So you can see I'm moving it. It's touching. It's still, it's touching the piece, but... All right, so I'm gonna put it just, make sure her ears are covered up and her hair, right there. And this is the thing, you don't have to press it all the way down. Just press it where her hairline is. And her cheek, and what is that? That's a part of her neck and her necklace. I just have to cut a small piece down here to show, or to uh, cover that up. That way it's a little easier to take off. And you can save this. This is a whole good piece. But what I'll probably do is do this. Because I'll use this piece to tape off this, cut this out, and paint the donut. Alright, let's move this down here so this doesn't move around. We can move this up. I've had this easel for a good 15 years, gosh. I'll probably have to put, no, yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'm just gonna cut out just the outline. I'm not trying to get any of hair lines. I'm not trying to get any hair that comes out here because what you wanna do is paint this first 
And then when you paint this, you can just feel free to bring any hair out if, if your portrait has hair going over it. You always want to paint your background first. That's what I always do. And you just barely push. You're not, I'm not, I'm hardly pushing on this. You can, you can kind of, you'll get a feeling of cutting it. And if you feel like you're not cutting it, you have to, you have to push a little bit harder than normal, get a new X-Acto blade. Put a new X-Acto blade in your, in your holder because you'll regret that because you do not want to cut into this. I'm using MDF board and it's pretty soft, so. All right, so her ear goes, the earring goes all the way. So we're gonna cut all the way here. And her jaw. I'm gonna cut just a little bit in. And her neck. Her hand is just perfect. What is that? Let's see here. Yeah, so I gotta cut, this is her neckline. And if you look at it at an angle, you can see where you've cut it. All right, so I'm gonna cut her neck, and then I'm gonna just continue where her hand is her hand stops right at her shoulder and then there's uh, her, there's a, she has a pearl necklace on or just a real big pearl piece um, I guess what I'll do is I'll do that I normally don't like to commit to doing something like this because I can just paint it over but since it's such a a defined area, I'm going to go ahead and do it this time. All right. hard enough for this. See, that's why I hesitated. And I always remember, if, if you're not sure of where you cut and you cut again, go back over it when you peel this off because you don't want to leave any masking on here. I've done that to a car hood. <laughs> like doing a mural on a car, I've left a little strip. I couldn't see it finished the painting they cleared it and then you could see that little piece not good not good All right, I'm just gonna layer this right enough just gonna cover up just enough to mask this part of her shoulder off and just kind of overlap it you know, don't try to get it right on the line because you never know we could have just a little piece and you'll have a solid little line where you've painted. This stuff is always good to use. Leftover stuff is good to use. Alright, that's why I tried to just Add it to your easel or on the wall. Normally I put it on the wall. Am I in the way here? Looks like it. I'll kind of let you see how. You just hold it. And I'm literally just tracing the outline of her hair.
I suggest practicing. If you use this uh, masking technique with this paper, just so you can kind of get the uh, the hang of how hard to press. See, once it's doing that, I know now that my X-Acto blade is uh, it's getting dull. See, it didn't cut right here. So the, the minute you do that, normally I would be like, <laughs> there we go, see. Um, get you, um, just put a new blade in, which I'm gonna do. <laughs> Because I do not want to have to keep overcutting my lines. Alright, we're going to cut this. You know what we're going to do? I'm not going to cut this out yet. You know what? I will. I'll cut it out, but I won't take the donut out. Paint this pink first. And then I'm gonna paint that to the, uh, the breakfast at Tiffany's color. here so I've got to be careful give me a pencil I can draw this on here All I need is just this part of her fingernails. Finger. There we go. So let's cut this. I really recommend starting <laughs> starting your cut it and then finishing it before you start doing drawing something in yeah. or else you are not gonna remember where you stopped cutting the frosting out. Alright. Let's cut this part. 
part of the finger out. All right. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to paint this part pink. I just hope that this isn't too pink. <laughs> this is this is like super pink. This is uh, iron lac. This is some real deal graffiti paint, but it is acrylic. And before I do that, I'm going to cover up my laptop, and I have I have two windows open, <laughs> so um, I will be all right on that on that part. Top is just just to the left of this painting. I have learned to cover up my laptop after so many years. <laughs> Take your paint up. All right, get a little test. So I'm going to spray a little in a trash can first. Get rid of that not mixed up paint. Now watch how nice. This should look nice next to that. Oh my god. <laughs> that, is, that is crazy. That's some crazy pink. What does it look like over here? I think what I'm going to do, did you see that right there? That piece, the gold, I think I'm going to put that on here too. I'm going to paint it pink and then I'm going to put that stencil up against it and do gold, I'll do gold and fade it out. I think that'll look nice. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to go. Alright, so I'm not going to sit here and like glass this. I probably should get, I have different tips for these. I don't, I don't, I'm not a, not a fan of stock tips. As you can see, you get a lot of overspray, a lot of paint, like uneven. So, I have... Um, I have a, a cap, it's called a Lego cap. Uh, we sell them on our website. Or I could use this uh, thin, we call it the Klaus thin because it's normally called a German thin. Back in the day that's what it was called. Um, or I could use a New York fat but that puts out a lot of paint as well. So I'm going to stick with this Lego because it's uh, it's for low and high pressure, I believe. That's what I feel like. And I feel like this might be a little bit of a high pressure can just by how that's coming out. Um, it doesn't say it on the can. Normally it, it'll tell you like this. Like this 94 can. To tell you, low pressure, right there, and it's very easy to paint with. Real nice, real, real fluid. 
Um, but I'm going to put this cap on here just so I can get it even. You can get a pretty decent thin line, um, but it does come out a little faster than that Klaus thin. The Klaus thin is very nice for thin lines. What to do is just twist that on there. And you can see, that's a pretty amazing cap. Very nice. All right. So, and this being uh, this masking, you, you're, you're trying not to flood this because if you put too much, it'll definitely go under and you don't want that. You don't have to be fixing all your ears and part of her face. So I'm just going to lightly dust this on first. Um, and plus this being white, it's going to take a lot. So try not, you're not trying to cover the entire thing all in one. You're just going to give it a light dusting. That is bright. And try not to go the same way. Because you'll just get you'll just get streaks. You see I'm just lightly dusting it. I'm not trying to cover the entire thing all at once. Take the heat gun, hit this with a heat gun, and watch when you use your heat gun on this because it'll it'll want to come up. It'll want to it'll heat up and it'll want to bubble up. So hold your heat gun back a little bit. I mean, I'm I'm a good foot and a half. You're just trying to you're just trying to make this uh, stuff dry a little bit before you put your next layer down. So. The nice thin coats. It's not like you're out on a wall outside. And I'm inside, so. I would normally take this over to our spray paint area, but. And look at that, that's already dry. Wow. That's actually very nice. <clears throat> All right, so let's start where we began. You guys see? And if you can, if you can tell I'm I'm just pushing when I want paint. I'm not trying to paint up here. I'm not trying to paint down here. I'm just trying to paint right where I want it. What I should have done is put like hand paint a pink background with acrylic and that would that would really help this be a more solid pink background with this spray paint.
that is some pink. See, you can see how that's wanting to come up here. You don't want that. And then again, I didn't push this down, so that's, that's like, it's pretty good there. You guys, this is already dry almost, like... And I'm gonna go a little bit slower and remember, I'm gonna put that gold over here. So if, if you see it kind of splotchy and you're gonna do something to the background, like a little bit of detail, put some other stuff back there, don't worry about it if it's kind of splotchy. Splotchy. I want it to be a little solid, so that's just how I am. time I paint in this room like this. <laughs> So now what I want to do is I want to paint this donut. And if you're asking, but Jeff, what about the overspray from this color to get on the pink? We are going to take care of that issue. But let's take this off first. So now we know this is where the donut ends. You can see where your masking is over here. So what I'm gonna do, where's my tape at? Tape, tape, tape. I'm gonna take some of this blue tape. And we're gonna make sure that we do not touch that paint we just painted. We're gonna make a little, a little tape dam, I guess you could say. Hold on. Let's do this. We're gonna do it this way. Hold on. Let's get some paper first. Get you some paper. do is we're going to tape this to here. Let's get that a little closer so we know. Right. You know there is a pink haze everywhere. Now we'll just put this 
And I know my line is here, so this paper is just going right here. The tape is not over there, and it's not going to get on this part. And that way you can start another piece here. I'm going to use a different tip for this color, so... Also do this. You can also do the little tape dam what I was talking about. Put put the tape on where you're gonna where you want it to stop and just fold it so it touches itself there. So then you've literally made like this little where the spray paint goes, it's just gonna stop here and go out. Iceberg. This is like perfect breakfast at Tiffany's color. What is that? Was that a paintbrush? Yeah. Let's put this cap. I'm going to put this cap on here. Check this one out. That is pretty amazing. Ooh, I need to practice. We're not going to spray hardly any on this one. Test it on. Perfect. All right. All right. Let's put this off. Yep. Well, should I do that gold right now? I think I should. Because then I'm just going to have to gonna have to uh take this off again See, I just want what I want to do is just get some gold and go out just to give it a little texture what do you think here? I think that would be nice. I 
I'm just drawing on the masking so I can see where her ear is and her cheek and her hair. Because it's kind of blended in. Where's my gold? This is amazing right here. And if you ever get some paint like this, this uh, Montana, this is Montana, and you try to spray it, and it won't spray, take your cap off, and they always have those little guards in there so that they don't spray in transit. In transit, all professional. This definitely is gonna have to have lid on it a cap because this is just like super fat this is what they call an orange dot like I don't even want to spray it because I just sprayed it in my trash can and it was crazy fat gold all right so am I shouldn't have throw those pieces of paper away all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this little guy off here I do not get any gold on this guy. Where's my tape? <laughs> How can I lose my tape all of a sudden? Here we go. Can I just not tear that? Oh my god, I'm going crazy, y'all. Going crazy. I just tore that piece of paper. Wow. I must be going loony. I just tore a piece of paper right to put it up here and now it's gone. crazy you guys I'm going crazy
You want to make sure you cover that up because you don't want any of that gold seeping underneath here because it will. It'll find a way. Overspray is an airbrush artist's worst enemy. All right. So I'm going to want some tape for this. We're just gonna, I think I just wanna spray kind of in a circle and fade it out. I'm not trying to go all the way over. I'm not trying to go from top to bottom. Right? I don't want that. normally put some spray adhesive on this but I uh, I don't want to get any spray adhesive on this because you'll be able to see it really bad so and with this gold every time you use it spray it in garbage first because that stuff unmixes up <laughs> unmixes up all right so I'm just gonna do this like I said so there's her outline, and I'm going to kind of just want to come out to about here. So where's the right here? So we'll start right about here. <laughs> All right, so hold it up. And what you're going to want to do is peel it outward so that it's not moving because you will smear that paint. All right, so now we're going to we're going to do our best to line up these guys so that they're a little uh, 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 like in line you're not just like putting it up here and it's gonna be off like crazy so and this is a very small side so you're not gonna do too much of that so you have enough room to line this up over here and then just kind of go to the left back and let's see if they're lined up. Alright, so I'm going to go this way. And I want to come all the way off of this because I don't like those parts that are these little parts over here and I don't want them to even if just a little bit I don't I don't like that and I actually think there's still a little bit of 
spray adhesive on the back of this to where it's still kind of sticking, so that's good. Um, if you feel like it's coming up, just get like a pen or pencil and just, when you're spraying, just don't get in the spray's way because if you spray it like this, it'll make a shadow of the pencil and you'll be very upset. So, I think we're good and I think we're pretty much lined up. Where's, let's see. Where's that, the bottom? I mean, and that looks, that looks good. We're lined up. Just right, right, right like that. I think it looks good. All right, remember, shake your can, spray your gold. Remember, we're just gonna hit, we're just gonna hit right here, because we're not trying to spray all this, remember? We're just hitting just enough, because it's not, it's not even out on this part. It's just barely shadowed. And if you don't want too much overspray, spray it in this direction. Because if you spray it like this, it's gonna all come over here. So kind of either spray it directly or at this angle. And this cap is really good for this because it doesn't give you a lot of paint coming out. Alright, I think I like that. And it goes just out to the outside. There's obviously going to be some overspray right here, but I think it'll look nice. Remember, push, pull from up here, push just a little bit so that you're not moving. And there you go. And that looks good, and we're all lined up. You see, if I would have just put it up there, then it, it would have been turned or kind of to the side. I think it's all lined up. I think that looks nice. should take off this masking. I want to let this dry for a little bit. Because <clears throat> this gold, normally you do gold at the very end. The very, very end. If your background is solid gold with that spray paint, and then don't touch it for like three days. All right, so we're gonna take this off. Do it slowly. Like I said, you can you can still use this if you need to. This is a big ass piece of masking that you don't have to throw out. keep this because it's got spray paint all over it all right all right so there is your background I might take uh, I have a couple of these pins it might be a little lighter but I might take take it and maybe outline a couple of these you know, how fun would that be? Just a couple of them. Um, maybe do a drip on some, because there's a drip with the donut like that. 
We'll see. I'll see what I want to do. I'm going to come to that point. But there you go. Background.